Okay, so um, remember last time we, well I, <laughs> uh, created a formula here. I added a column to the players table, um, the cleaned players table, using uh, DAX, which is really just Excel uh, syntax. Uh, so I created the full name column, and then I built a very simple pivot table um, that broke um, that broke yards uh, from the plays table out by the full name um, of this table, and I did that um, by creating a relationship between the two tables first. So um, today I'm going to show something a little bit similar, but then with a couple of twists. Uh, so first, um, rather than uh, using a pivot table. I'm going to do something a bit more visual today. Uh, I'm going to use a pivot chart this time on a new worksheet. And just like last time, I'm going to use the yards, um, you know, the yards field, which will become, um, after I click it, uh, it will define, the add-in will define behind the scenes a sum of yards measure. It takes a second to warm up the, the MPROC engine here, but um, there's total yards, just like uh, yesterday in the pivot pivot table, but now in a pivot chart. Um, and uh, again, just like yesterday, uh, I'm going to use the um, the birth state name, which is something we, we sliced by. Uh, and the relationship is already created, still left over from yesterday. So I'm going to put that on the vertical slicer zone. And in yesterday's uh, static blog post, uh, I had birth state name as a two-column layout. It looks a little bit easier to read, easier to find what you're looking for. Um, one of the you know drawbacks of of uh, static pictures is that I can't really show you without a million screenshots how I got got it like that. And you see this little parent control that's wrapped around the slicer. I can grab that and resize it. Once it hits a certain critical width, it we the Power Pivot add-in switches it to a two-column layout. That's something something that uh, the Power Pivot add-in adds to Excel and uh, there's quite a bit going on there. The, the add-in is actually looking at the number of distinct values in the birth state name field and also at like the 95th percentile of the, the length of those names. So you see that everything fits here but Marshall Islands and we didn't set all of the tiles to be wide enough to see that one. So that's, you know, and generally speaking, I think that's exactly what, what you're looking for. Um, and now I'm going to grab something from another table. Uh, this time I'm going to do uh, the well, actually, let's do something else first. Let's do um, let's do years in service. We didn't look at this last night. Uh, let's put or whatever the last time is that you checked it on the blog. Let's put this on the uh, horizontal slicers, and this shows me how many years players have been in the NFL. Um, so things like hey, like how many people have been around in the NFL for 20 years? That's an awfully long time. Uh, and we see here that the other slicer filters itself to show me that the only players who've been around in the NFL for 20 years, at least uh, in the the 15-year uh, like window for which I have stats, they only came from Texas and Virginia. And if they've been there 21 years, they only came from Arkansas or Mississippi. It's kind of interesting that it's only sort of southern states um, that have these um, long-running players, but I'm not sure if there's anything to that or not. Something to look at later, I guess. Um, so we'll go back to 20. And I get the field list back up. Um, now I'm going to use a, a table that I haven't haven't used before. I'm going to use the uh, position table. I'm going to take a pro position name, and I'm going to drag that to the horizontal slicer zone as well. Now I haven't created a relationship here, so it shouldn't matter as I slice. And it doesn't. The chart doesn't change at all because there's no relationship whatsoever between the uh, pro position table and the plays table, which is where my numerical measure comes from. Then the field list here actually tells me that. It tells me that I need a relationship and gives me this little create button. And you saw how I created a relationship in the previous blog post using the dialog uh, in the other Power Pivot window. But in this case, I can click this, and there's an auto detect algorithm that we developed in conjunction with Microsoft Research. Um, and uh, it's going to be, it's out there right now scanning uh, all 40 plus tables, um, looking for a path between the tables that I already have in my report and the table that, that's sort of out there on an island, which in this case is the position name table. You see that it found that. Um, go ahead and close this out. 
And it's going to refresh. And now it should matter quite a bit uh, what I filter by. Uh, it should change the, the table quite a bit. And a lot of positions, um, oh, I have this filtered still to 20 years, so that's why I'm getting, getting, uh, getting no data. But let's, um, let's look at things like this. Um, so yeah, we are, it does affect the, the yardage readout now because the relationship is created. That's a pretty nifty feature that you've probably seen if you've seen any power pivot demos at conferences, but those of you who haven't, um, something that we, we put in there, it's a very convenient thing for basically for everyone, but in particular for Excel users who aren't yet used to um, building relationships explicitly. We really like that. Um, now to make the chart interesting, uh, I'm going to, you know, because a one column chart is, isn't telling me a whole lot. The, um, I'm going to break the chart out by a lot of fields here. I, I could search here. I've got to train myself to use that. Uh, never had that feature before. Um, I'm going to put down on the chart axis. And this is the play number, essentially. If you're familiar with football, um, there's first, second, third, and fourth down. Uh, minus one, uh, I don't really know what that means yet, but I'm assuming it means um, it's not, it's, it means a, spe a special teams play, like a kickoff that doesn't actually have a, uh, a down number. Um, you know, it looks pretty, uh, I'm on wide receiver, let's clear all of my filters here for a second. Um, it does seem to make sense to me, you know, sort of inspecting what I'm looking at at a, at a distance here. There's more yards in first down than second than third, and that makes sense because there actually are more first down plays than any other down and second and vice versa, you know, and, and so on and so on. Um, the fact that fourth down is so high indicates to me that probably uh, kicking yards are being counted. And like I said, I have a lot of work left to do um, in the power pivot window uh, before this model uh, you know, is actually returning the right numbers and things like that. But I can switch back and forth. I can constantly iterate between reports and uh, modeling. And because I'm the person, I'm the business user, I'm the person who understands football, uh, it's a very quick, tight loop of iteration. You know, if, if I was a BI consultant and I didn't know anything about football, I might not know that I have a problem here. This might be exactly right. And so you can certainly see how that slows down the, the, the progress on a, on a project. Uh, last thing I'm going to do here is uh, resize a little bit this top zone to make it look a little bit better. Um, give it a little bit more space so I can read that last row. See how everything adjusts. Uh, and a couple of quick tricks that I like to do to make, and I'm not an artist of, in any way, um, but a lot of things I like to do to make uh, Excel reports look more like apps, more like reports, um, less like Excel. Uh, I like to turn off the grid lines and the headings you see that it already makes the surface a lot cleaner. Um, I guess one other thing I should do is make make this slicer shorter so that it sort of fits in one one screen a little bit. Um, I also like to take my uh, selected cell and hide it behind one of the floating objects so that when someone's looking at the report, they can just uh, consume it uh, as it is like that. Uh, okay, so for the rest of this, I think I'm going to switch back to the other format of um, posting static text, screenshots, things like that. Uh, very interested in your feedback in terms of which uh, method you prefer, uh, the video, the screenshots, and text, a hybrid. Uh, please let me know, and uh, thank you very much.